says, if you've prayed about it, don't stress about it. God will answer you when you least expect it. If you've prayed about it, don't stress about it. God will answer when you least expect it. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. We're going to read verses 1 through 19. And the title of my sermon this morning is, With God, No Chains Can Hold You. With God, No Chains Can Hold You. When we get out of the chains and out of the, freeze, and out of the prison, we will be set free in our spiritual walk. Let us read. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And my Bible parenthesis says those were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarantines of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. You need to highlight that in your Bible. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came unto him, and a light shineth in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he was a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And then we out and passed through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hands of Herod and from all of the exceptions of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the things, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto him, Thou art mad. Now I'm going to stop here just a second, and it's not even in my notes, but the Lord just gave me this. Now here these people are praying for Peter, Peter contingency for answered prayer. And when Peter shows up at the gate, she's so astounded about what they're praying about that God's answered that prayer, that she didn't even let him in. She just ran to the gate, saw him, and then went back in, it said. And then what did they tell her when she told them? They told her, that she was mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. They, then they said, it is his angels. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he beckoned unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison, and he said, go show these things unto James and the brethren. And he departed and went and to another place. Let us pray. Father, as we come to you this morning, Lord, I pray that you will give us this divine word of what you want us to hear this day. Open our hearts and open our minds to your word. Father, help us to understand that it's through you that the chains can be lifted from our lives. <coughs> now, Father, help us to be the vessel you would have us to be and lead and direct us in this next two few minutes. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now here Peter was, he was arrested by Herod. 
He was put in prison, and he was being held for execution. Herod had given specific orders for this man not to get loose. Now, he had already killed one. He had already killed James, and he would gotten the people all excited over this. So now he's going to make sure that he's got Peter because of this king he's hoping will exalt him by him doing this. And he had all the plans in the world to execute Peter. He was going to silence his voice forever. Now that's what the devil tries to do to you and I. He tries to silence us. But Herod told the ones over the prison, he told them, he said, it's your job, man. you got to keep this man and you do not let him get free. You know, you and I have an enemy. And it's his job every single moment to keep every believer from breaking free from the chains of the bondage of our spiritual lives. Yeah. Now, in the evening before Peter's execution, you know, we're told in verse 4 that they upgraded security. I don't know if you realize that, to prevent Peter from escaping. The Bible said there were two chains. If you go back and read the history, one was attached to the wall and to his hands. And the other chain was attached to his ankles to keep him from going anywhere. And if that wasn't enough, he increased the security even more when he said by there were four shifts with two guards on each shift. And he put one guard on each side of Peter to make sure that he was not going to get away. And then if he had any concerns about that, if, there was, if that wasn't enough, he had two prison gates to get through. And if he got through those two gates, then there was the large outer massive gate. And behind that gate was the warden of the prison who was there to watch also. I mean, man, we're talking about maximum security here. He had no intentions of Peter going anywhere. First of all, that right there ought to tell you and I something in our lives. When we are praying and being at peace with God and trusting God, we don't have to worry. Amen. It don't matter how grim something looks or how disappointing people may be to you or what things look like to you. If God's in control, he's going to bring you through. Amen. You know, at the beginning of Acts 12, we have James dead, Peter in prison, and the tyrant Herod basking in his popularity and prayers. And in this chapter, we have Peter free. And in the end, if you read all the way to the end of this half chapter, you know what happened to Herod? He was dead and eaten by the worms. Now let me tell you something. The word of God grows and multiplies in all that we do. And we cannot stop him. But see, what we have to understand is that he's got all of this done. So it seemed as if even if he got out of the chains or out of this situation that there still was no human possibility he could get away. Sometimes in our lives, it may seem like that we're facing situations that we cannot break free from. But if we put our power and our trust in Jesus Christ and we truly pray and live our lives according to God, God will bring you through whatever it is. Amen. You know, when I went back and read this and studied and went back and looked at some concordance, do you know what happened here? And I'm getting ahead of myself. The angel had to wake Peter up. Do you know what that tells me? Now, here he is in prison, maximum security. He was exactly Nancy. He was at peace. He was asleep. You know, we guys are not limited to earthly help. Our strength is not in the horses and the chariots, and the, as the Bible declares, but the Bible says the spiritual prison that the enemy wants to hold us is the devil. You know, a lot of times the devil will make you think, I got you this time. I got you this time. I've got the chains on you. I've got the guards on you. I've got the gates to stop you. What are Satan's spiritual prison in our lives? It's our worldly pleasures. It's our pride. It's our self-righteousness. It's us worrying about the approval of the world. Doubt. Weariness in our labor in Christ. And discouragement. All those things are chains that the devil is using to try to hold us. But I want to remind you what the Bible says. The Bible says, he that the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. If you and I are truly living in Jesus Christ, no matter what the situation looks like around you, you are going to be like Peter. You're going to be at peace. 
You're going to be able to lay down your head and sleep at night because God has this. We're in his care. But there's several lessons for us in this scripture I want us to look at in our Christian walk. Number one is the chains. Now I want to talk about these chains for a minute. Here he had chains on the hands, chain on the feet. You may, you know, a lot of times we have chains on us. We have great things ahead of us. But instead of being at peace because we know God has our life in his hands, we allow the enemy to chain our spiritual lives with fear and doubt and insecurity. We allow other people to change us down by causing us anguish, by preventing us from being all we can be for God because they try to discourage us. Stopping your life from moving out by telling you, you can't do this. <coughs> Where are you supposed to go? What do you think you're going to do? Have you ever had that thrown at you? These kind of chains, folks, will hold us back. Those are chains of the devil. Right. One of the greatest chains is that the devil is trying to make you doubt. When things aren't going exactly like you think they need to go, the devil tries to make us doubt. Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this the way it's supposed to go? And then I reach back. If you've prayed about it, don't spray about it. Don't stress about it. God will answer it when you least expect it. Peter was at peace and not expecting anything because he not only was asleep, it said his outer garment, undoubtedly, he didn't even have it on. Maybe he was using it for a pillow for his head. I don't know. But he was at peace. But we cannot allow the chains of this world and the chains of things going on around us, whether it be in church, out of church, at work, at home, whatever, we cannot allow those chains to bind us. Because if we will depend on God, the chains will come off. Amen. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear or of intimidation, of being afraid or backing up. God expects us to move forward in peace and leave the work to him. If there's an opportunity that God wants to bring into your life, don't you dare let the chains hold you back. That's right. Shake off the chains. Shake off the chains. In verse 7 now, the angel told Peter, quick. You know, the Bible says in verse 7, let me read it. And below the angel of the Lord came unto him, a light shineth in the prison. And he smote Peter. Peter was so sound asleep when the light shone in the prison and the angel appeared. He undoubtedly still didn't wake up, wake up and he had he smote him. It means he hit him. He's like, hey, Peter, wake up. You know, sometimes I think that's what God has to do with us when he's trying to get us to do. Sometimes he has to send the angel to hit us and say, hey, wake up. The light's in front of you. The angel's here. Wake up. You know, God is wanting you and I not to be bound and to get up and let the chains fall off. Amen. He wants us to let him liberate us. How? I believe the answer is in verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. <laughs> prayer is one of the greatest chain, chain breaker you will ever have. Amen. I've always had my quote-unquote prayer closet. But in doing this study, the Lord has laid it on my heart. In my office, I'm fixing to put up a board like it's in the back of this church. And every time there's someone who's asked me to pray or I feel like I need to pray for, I'm not going to just do it. I'm going to write it and I'm going to put it on that board so that every time I walk in my office, that board's in front of me to pray. Let me tell you something. If you want a successful life, if you want a peaceful life, if you want to be what God wants you to be and keep the chains off, keep your prayer life going. Amen. We need to spend more time on our knees. And when the chains seem to be binding us, we need to pray. And sometimes we may feel so bad that we, and so bound by the chains of our lives or the situations going on, that we don't know how to pray. I've had dear friends call me, and I've called them, and I've, I've said to them, I don't know how else to pray about this. Help me pray. The church was praying for Peter right here at that time. And we need to stay in prayer. 
And if you don't know how to pray, call somebody you believe in, somebody you trust. I've got some true prayer warriors that I've been dealing have been in my life for many years. And I don't have a problem at all picking up the phone or sending them a text and saying, I need you to pray now. I'll explain later. Or I just need you to pray. And vice versa. We can pray, but sometimes even if we're so bound, we can't feel like we can't pray. We need to call the prayer warriors. We need to stay in touch with God. He will send the angels to break the chains of the circumstances going on around you. Amen. But the second thing he had to deal with, once the chains come off, there were two guards. <coughs> one on each side of Peter. Now, if you noticed in that scripture, it does not say what happened to those two guards. Once the, ch the chains came off, where did the guards go? I don't know. What does that tell me? When God drops the chains that are trying to surround you and drown you and brings the chains off, quit worrying about what's around you. Undoubtedly, there was no worry about what those two guards were. If nothing else, probably if those chains fell off and the light came as it shone through from the Lord and the angel appeared, they may have been so astounded they were just at awe. They were just frozen. I don't know. The scripture doesn't say. But I will tell you this. When the chains came off, there were the two guards, but there was no intercession from the guards. Why? Because God had made the way. What am I telling you? When the chains come off of your life, you will get out of what's going on. God will deliver you. He will set you free. It tells us that when you shake off the chains, the enemy can't hold you. Even when there's guards. And there's going to be guards. And I believe one of the implications of them is discouragement and intimidation. The devil will use those all the time, if he can, to beat you down. To talk you out of what God has told you to get up and go do. To try his best to discourage you. And a lot of times he uses good people to do it. Let me tell you something. If you think the devil won't try to use good people to discourage you, you better hold on tight. So, Because right. sometimes some of the people that I have trusted the most, that I have put the most faith in, have been the very ones of what I thought God was doing and expected has let me down. But you know what? That's not a Donna problem. And I'm not going to get intimidated or discouraged. That's God's problem. Amen. So see, the enemy wants to stop you. He wants to keep you and destroy your walk with the Lord. The angel, God sent the angel, and he, told, he hit Peter. He woke him up, and he said, get up quickly. He didn't tell him to lollygag. When God takes the chains off of your life of something that's going on and he's directing you in a direction, go do it. Don't fool around. Don't say, well, maybe did he really? Go be what God wants you to be. The angel told him, hurry up. Gird yourself. Let's go. Then the third thing was, once Peter shook off the chains, walked out from the guards, there was the gates. You know, many times... When the enemy, when he can't keep us bound in the chains of fear and doubt, when he can't hold us with the guards of discouragement and intimidation, then he tries to put up the gates of our lives and tries to shut them so they won't open. <coughs> but you know what in this story? When all else failed, the Bible said in verse 10, the iron gate opened on its own, leading out of the city. When they, when they were past the first and second ward, they came under the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. Now, if you don't think that God's not got you and he will loose you and no chains can hold you, that right there verifies it. Amen. When you and I shake off the chains and the guards, we don't have to worry about any further gates. We, when the devil is trying to hinder our spiritual lives, God will carry us through the journey that he has for us. And then the story shifts. And in verse 11 through 17, if you notice in verse 11, it says Peter came to himself. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, 
Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hands of Herod and from all the exceptions of the people of the Jews. He comes to himself. He thought he was in a vision. He thought he was just having a dream. And the whole time all this has taken place. When you and I truly come to ourselves in our spiritual walk with the Lord, we will realize that God is truly in control and he's leading and directing our lives. When we shake off the chains and the guards try to hinder us, he'll carry you through the journey he has for us. You know, a lot of people never finish the spiritual journey the way that God intended it to be. Why? Because they won't shed the chains. They try to let the guards hinder them. They let the discouragement, the intimidation, they let all of these things prevent them from truly trusting God to do what God's telling them to do. How many times has God told you to go do something or given you something, laid something on your heart to do for someone and you're like, well, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure that's what I really need to do. How many times? When we do that, we're letting the chains shackle us. We've got to shake off the ch chains and the shackles. Amen. And when people do that, they never have true freedom. That's why they don't lay down at night and sleep and have a peaceful rest. That's why they're always tossing and turning because they're not settled within themselves and their relationship with the Lord. They're not shaking off the chains. And when you don't shake off the chains, you're giving the devil what he needs to keep you spiritually bound. Amen. It's just like that little rat hole I've talked about in the past. Where the pipe comes up through the floor, there's this tiny little, insy teensy little crack right beside it where they cut it just a little bit bigger than the pack. And from time to time, I've had to treat it. I've had to pack it. And I've seen mom pack it. Because a little mouse will get downstairs in the basement. And it's amazing how it can flatten out and squeeze right up to that pot and get in the cabinet. And when it does, it raises havoc. And when we won't shake off the chains of all of these things in our lives, that's exactly what the devil does with our lives as Christians. He will raise havoc with you. He will make you uncertain about where you're supposed to be, what you're supposed to be doing. He will have you tossed to and from. He will have you where you're up one day and down the next. I've seen some people in their lives that were worse than a seesaw. Now, I don't know how many of them. I remember the seesaws when we had them on the island. And you get one on one side and one on the other. And it's up and down, up and down, up and down. I've seen a lot of people whose lives are like that, and it's because they won't shake the chains of the devil. They won't shake the chains and let God have control. Amen. Peter shook the chains he put on his cloak. Let me tell you something. The enemy of your soul is guarding the gate. He's trying to keep you down from being what God wants you to be. But when we shake those chains and we go beyond the guards and we get through the gate, we have the victory God has for us. Did we not? Peter did. Mm -hmm. I want to shift just a minute though back to verse 7 when it reads, Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. Do you know what that shining light is? It's the hope, the victory, and the word of God in the darkness of this terrible world that we live in today. You and I have the light at our beck and call. We have his word, we have his hope, and we have his victory. And this shows us that no matter how much the enemy thinks he has you bound by chains, by the guards around you, and the gate to contain you, if you will look to the light of the gospel, we will be free. The church will be free. Amen. Individuals will be free. People out there who are struggling can have freedom have freedom and we have that freedom when we do exactly as I have just said because with God there are no chains that can hold you when we shake off the chains get past the guards and out of the prison none whatsoever because when all of that happened now this is a man who's supposed to be dying who Herod was going to kill listen to what he said verse 17 
But he beckoned unto them with the hand to hold their peace. Even in the midst of all that's going on, Peter's showing that he shed the chains. How? Because he told the church, he said, you hold your peace. You know, sometimes it's real easy when we've been bound by chains, the chains of discouragement and frustration, when we've had all of these things happening to us, when we have insecurities and, and, and discontentment and we've shaken them off, sometimes we personally, the devil tries to use our internal self to get riled up and get and Peter told them, he said, hold their peace. And he declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. See, this tells me another story, folks. I don't need to be fighting any battles. Amen. They're God's battles. That's right. I just need to keep the chains off. I need to get away from the guards of discouragement and get on through the gate. And then I need to pray about it, and I need to leave it to God. The battle's not mine, said little David. Lord, it's thine. I'm in your favor. Hey. So when you have chains trying to discourage you and hold you down, you need to proclaim and hold on to the faith of God. Peter told him that Lord had brought him out of the prison. And then what he told him, what did he tell him to do then? He said, go. Show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now that told me one more thing in closing this morning. When Peter got out of the prison, he wasn't mad and bitter. He wasn't. At all. He first went to the people that God, was, that God had praying for him. And he let them know that he was free and free indeed. And then he told them to go about, he basically was saying to them, you go about your father's business. But you worry about Herod, you go about your father's business. You do what you're supposed to do. Herod's God's business. And that's what you and I need to do with all of the things in the world that are trying to chain us down, whether it's a person, whether it's a thing, whether it's something going on around you, you need to leave it to God and let him handle it. And you need to go on and be about God's business like Peter did. Because you know, as I told you at the beginning, what happened to Herod in the end? He died. And he was eaten by the worms. Now let me tell you something. You don't play around with God's stuff. That's right. He will have the last say. But I want us in closing today to understand <coughs> that we have to make sure that we are not letting the chains of life we got to make sure that we're not letting the guards of discouragement. And we got to make sure we're not letting any gates of the enemy hold us back. We need to make sure that we know that we know that we're in God's care. And we need to shake it off. When people try to discourage me, and the Lord knows they try to do that, especially me being a woman. And when people try to discourage me in other ways, instead of letting it get me down, does it bother me sometimes? It starts to. But when it does, boy, I hit my knees. And then I get in my word. I look at this light. This is my light, folks. This is the light that directs me how to go. Amen. Because when Peter and that angel started out of that dark dungeon in prison, they needed the light to see, right? This is the light. This is your and I's word. And I get in that word, and then I leave it to God. And I go on about God's business. And that's what you and I have to do. Every day you live, you need to be about the Father's business. And it doesn't matter what's going on around you or what someone else is trying to do or not do to discourage or to put you down or anything else. Or if something's going on at work and they're just trying their best. You know, a lot of people at work will walk all over somebody else to get themselves advanced on the ladder. That's right. You know? When somebody knows they're in the wrong, sometimes they'll really try to put you in a bad position to make themselves look good. But you know what? That ain't my problem either. That's a God thing. Amen. My thing is to be like Peter and be about my father's business. And it said he departed and went to another place. Shake off the chains, folks. Get out of the prison and be set free through the Word and through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
May God bless you this week.